All right, so we're into the Bariac. Bariac? Variac. Uh, I've got my voltage down to about five or so volts. And I'm going to turn it on. And then I've got this set to AC, uh, voltage AC. And I'm just going to check. And if, if you notice, one hand in my pocket, and the other one is hailing a taxi cab. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, so right there I've got about seven volts. It's being a little squirrely there. 7.3 volts. So I'm going to... Um, roll it up a little bit more. We're not really sending anything in yet. I just want to get to maybe about 20 to 25 volts. There's 22, that's good. So if I go to the other side of the switch, of course I've got nothing because it's not turned on. So now I'm gonna flip the switch. Switch is on, I come back to here again, and now I have 21 volts there as well. So that goes into the transformer, and it should come back out now uh, and be connecting into, for example, I should have a very low voltage, 0.6 volts on the heater rail, because of course it, at max 120 volts, it should be about 6.3. Also, this should be my 5 volt rail that goes in, and it should also be really low, yeah, 0.2. But if you watch the, uh, the voltmeter, as I slowly dial this up, you'll see that climbing. Now it's up to 1 volt, etc. And then this one is at also one, about 1 volt. But if I go to the mains power, it is 38 volts, right? So, so far I'm seeing nothing wrong. I'm just going to kind of keep bringing it up. I'll give myself connection to the main power here. 50 volts, still nothing. Nothing seems like it's smoking or unhappy. I'll get it all the way up to about 60. That's the halfway point. And that looks good. I always like to let it sit for a couple seconds. My heater wires, I can also check at the end of the heater chain to make sure I've got voltage there. I do. 1.6 volts there. 1.69, about 1.7. Same here. So that means from beginning to ending, my heaters are giving good voltages. That's another good test of the heater lines. But you should also quickly, while you've got the heaters running some lower voltages, just check continuity because or check that, that you're seeing it on all of the different points that it should be because you can, yeah 1.6 there, accidentally have some of them where they're connected through to the circuit but they aren't connected really to the points so you want to make sure you can also t detect it on the tabs as well and I'm just checking on the tabs, yeah 1.6 there so we're in good shape, Ooh, I'm not getting a good connection there am I on the right one? there we go All right, so that's looking good across the board. I'm just going to bring the voltage up some more. And at this level, I'm not too worried. I, I usually, I'm not going to see much because I don't have anything in it. So I'm going to bring it all the way up to 110. 118, okay. So now I want to check that I got about 6.3 volts. Oh, I, I forgot. It, it'll be 3.3. If I was to connect this to the ground wire to the other side of that rail, it will give me the full 6.3. Um, so effectively, if I connect this carefully here, and then I touch this the other side, I'll get the 6.3. 6.6, okay. So that's perfect in, for what we're looking for. Similarly, if I connect this guy here, and then touch the other side of the five, point, the five rail, actually about five volts, yeah, 5.2 volts, perfect. So all of my voltages look right on line. So I'm gonna dial down to near zero and then I'll also shut off and I'm going to plug in the rectifier and I've got that tube right here so I'm going to go grab it. I'm going to now hook in the rectifier. All right my rectifier tube is in. Now is where I definitely want to be a little bit more con conscientious and careful because I don't want to blow that tube. It's a nice uh, new old stock RCA. Uh, all right got my ground hooked up so I'll first again I'm going to shut the power switch off. I believe that was off. And we'll turn this on and see what voltages I have here. I have 3.5 volts on that side, and I have 0.1 on the other, so that means there's nothing going through. That's good. I flip the switch on, 3.5 there. Now, it's going to take a while before the actual rectifier can start processing, because uh, it has a lower you know, limit where it won't process anything. So uh, I'm just going to kind of slowly bring things up. So we're at 15 volts AC coming in. We've got about 47 on the high voltage side. But the rectifier is not quite even seven tenths of a, uh, of a volt. And I don't believe we're going to get anywhere close enough for it to start glowing. No, we're not. Of course, I'm just going to have to keep bringing the voltages up slowly, but I don't want anything to get blown, so I'm just going to do it nice and slowly. I think we'll probably have to get close to the full five volts before that will heat up the cathode enough to start pushing stuff into the anode side of that rectifier. 2.2 volts. We're getting close. All right, I'm up to almost a full 110 volts, and now I think I should be getting a nice glowing tube down there. We'll look and see. 
I'm not seeing the rectifier give me any kind of heavy glow, so let's look to DC voltages. Yeah, we've got DC voltage, 300, 360 volts there. Right, it's kind of odd though, I'm not seeing... I've got the right voltage here of 364 volts. But then when I come over here, I've got 364, 364, but on the other side of this resistor, I'm not getting any voltage at all. I will have to double check that. It looks like for some reason we're not getting a good... This resistor is not seeming to pass the voltage down from this end to this end like it's supposed to, because this cap has no voltage at all. So that's something we'll have to look at. But right here we have 364. We should have 364 here as well. All right, so that's looking okay. Time to try and troubleshoot that. One of the things that uh, Angie was just asking about, once you power off an amp that's been at this state, you want to watch your voltages. See how quickly that's already dropped down to 1.2 volts. So the, this design has got a, 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 res, a, a resistor in line that will drain very quickly for you so that you don't have the, the, the uh, buildup. So we're down to 0.3 volts already. So this is safe to touch now. Um, so we need to figure out, I'm going to test the resistance on this resistor and make sure that maybe it hasn't, something's gone wrong with it or maybe it's failed so that it's not passing through. And then from there we'll go further. Okay, everybody, I figured it out. I uh, have fixed it already, but I basically took my continuity tester, like, so if I put, you know, as you've known the continuity tester, if I touch this to chassis, that means I've got ground. When I started touching here, I was getting ground, but now you hear no ground. So I figured it out was that sometimes when you're soldering these turrets, if you're having to put a lot in or it keeps flowing, you don't notice it, it will drop down and create a bubble underneath it. And I lift, I took all the screws out and lifted it up off and the ground disappeared. So I realized that's probably what was going on. So I heated it up, pulled, uh, pulled, uh, first pulled the resistor out, tested it, and it was fine. And then I heated that hole up, or that turret up, and I got my solder sucker and sucked out the excess solder, retested, and it was perfectly fine. So this is one of the main reasons you want to test without tubes, because if I'd actually had tubes, they would have been pulling a decent amount of current, and that could have either blown a fuse or blown something else out. But luckily, since there's nothing really drawing any current in this amp at that point, it just went to ground and went back out again. Um, so now we've got... Um, that fixed we'll bring it back up again make sure it looks good check voltages and uh, we'll see where we're at so let's give that a go all right so the variac i'll turn back on and then i will turn this oh i just popped a fuse i think i, I saw a spark over here which would be the fuse popping so if i go to here we have the, with the switch on I've got 114 volts, but that popped a fuse. So it's very possible we still have something leaking there. So I'm gonna go and shut back off again and see if we can figure out what's going on. Now, I think also, yeah, that blue. It's also possible though, I have a one amp fuse. I think I have, um, these are probably slow blow. I mean, fast blow, and it should be a slow blow because it needs to take the inrush current and it might've gotten a little too much inrush current. But I will put another one of those in and we'll give it a go in a second here. Let me find where those go. All right, so I got the fuse back in. And again, it's working fine. Um, I do believe that is because I have a fast blow. It, it took a couple of power ons and a couple of runs, but when you get that first inrush current, it can really choke a, a fast blow fuse. You can see here it's nice and toasted. So I'll get some slow blow, blow one amp fuses and see where that goes. But the good thing is now is if I test right here, oh, I gotta be on DC volts. Oh, I've got 380 volts there. Oh no, it looks like we may be grounding out still because I'm back to only a little bit there and it was actually working for a second. I tested it. Okay, so I'm still getting a ground out there somehow and I need to figure that out. So something in that area is grounding out. Okay, so I believe I've got it. Um, and I will show you why. Look here. I was right. There was a small blob of solder that was dangling down below that spot. The, the way I figured it out was I effectively tilted this guy upright, put the soldering iron still at it, but now that it had an angle and weight, it kind of like got enough melted that it dropped and I just heard it thump. And the other way I found it was I had kind of slid my pinky finger under and I could feel it just hanging down there. So that fell out now, and now we're gonna test for continuity. Now that it's tight down, let's see what we get. Clip this to our chassis, put it on continuity. We're good, all right, so we'll test here now. Nothing, no continuity, nothing at all, all right. So that should solve that problem. Let's give it a try again. And I know that I'm safe on my voltages everywhere else. It's just that from there on out it was stopping. So we should be able to turn on our Variac. Turn the power on. 
and we'll test our voltage here now. Oh, I'm blocking. Let me move this. And I can see it flickering around there, but okay. So let's try that again. Voltage at that point is 354. If I come down to the tube itself, 359. There we go. Perfect. So those do seem a little high, but that's because we have no tubes in. Once I put the tubes in, we'll be good. So at this point now, I'm feeling comfortable. I'm going to put tubes in. So power it off, turn the variac down, and get it down to about 5 volts. I'm also going to, even though there's not really much output coming out, I'm going to still plug in my dummy load. I've got it wired up for 8 ohms. Dummy load is plugged in. And we will plug in our tubes. So stop for a minute, plug in the tubes, and we'll be back. Ready to go. <laughs> 